Good morning, good morning, good morning. Angry fans. It's Derek Watson, the angry dentist, back again. On the 1st of September, after my summer break. I didn't decide to have a summer break. I just sort of had one. <laughs> I had a... Uh, I didn't actually sort of act up. You know, my last podcast, I said... Uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow and I fully intended to talk to you tomorrow but then I think the next day I put something interesting on on the radio and I thought hmm do you know what I'd rather listen to this <laughs> and I didn't really have anything on my brain at the time so I decided not to bother and I thought I deserve a break I mean you know come on you had a break actually I'm gonna have another break because I'm going to Centre Parks again in, in two weeks time I think not next week, the week after, so they're going to be another break. So I'm sorry. So I'm going to get a maximum number five more angries and do another five uh, day break. But um, anyway, there's enough days in the year. So how are you? I hope you're well. I hope you're happy. You're still happy in your job as a dentist. I am. I know I am. <laughs> That's a great thing about being a dentist, isn't it? You don't just have to be a dentist. I mean, you can be other things as well, you know? I mean, I've got other irons in the fire and uh, fortunately they're all pretty hot. Hot, hot, hot! But being a dentist is, being a dentist is turning into a bit of a hobby for me. I've got to be quite honest with you. Uh, however, I have decided that if I were to have a hobby, dentistry is the hobby I would choose. So, I'm lucky, aren't I? In a way, because I'm doing, I'm doing the job I love and I can earn a living from it. And if I don't need to earn a living from it, then I can just turn up at work and boss the staff about anyway. <laughs> As you can see, I am benefiting from the fact that nitrous oxide has just been ruled legal. I'm on a legal high. I'm on something. I don't know what. There's a drug, serotonin, isn't it, or something? I'm on. I'm on that. That's a legal high, isn't it? You're still allowed to have that, are you? You're still allowed to have that? No. All the kids are sniffing nitrous oxide from these uh, sparklets canisters, and and the, the the reason they get them from sparklet, I don't know. I'm guessing. I'm only guessing. I don't know this, but I have a I have a relative who's, I have some nieces and nephews, let's just put it this way, who's, who have been found in possession of discarded sparklets canisters uh, and with no intention of making whipped cream whatsoever. <coughs> Excuse me, not used to talking. So, So anyway, yeah, so I presume, I mean, this is not Entonox that they've got in there. I mean, this is obviously need nitrous oxide, which is a, is a problematic gas in that it contains no oxygen by definition. And uh, in a way, um, <clears throat> pre-mixed nitrous oxide with oxygen in the form of Entonox is actually a very safe, a very safe high. And, you know, was uh, being used at parties as early as 1799 when it was discovered um, and the reason why it's so safe is that it it really doesn't have a chemical action at all it doesn't you know it's not its action is not chemical in nature from what I remember it just sort of gets into your bloodstream where it's entirely passive it diffuses into your brain where again it's the molecules are small enough to pass the blood-brain barrier and gets into your brain and sort of deoxygenates your brain mildly making you a bit dizzy and a bit uh, euphoric and it has a self-limiting feedback mechanism whereby if you get too uh, euphoric and sort of start to lapse into unconsciousness your breathing slows down and you sort of drop the mask or whatever um, and um, and uh, so you stop inhaling it and go back to inhaling room air. And you can't technically become anoxic 
and get uh, anoxic brain damage because it is again pre-mixed by definition is 20% oxygen so uh, and which is what you get normally anyway so uh, all it does is deliver more nitrous oxide it never delivers less oxygen so I suppose you're blowing off your carbon I don't know I don't know that. I don't know I'm trying to remember from 30 years ago okay like give me a fucking you know, Give me a break, okay? I'm gonna have to mark this NSFW now, aren't I? Because I've had an FU. Fortunately, I didn't do the CK. Anyway, now the only case I had where somebody literally obviously did himself serious damage in connection with nitrous oxide, it wasn't a case I had actually, it was a case I remember as a student. And it was a guy who was a medical technician, and as a medical technician, he had access to nitrous oxide. And he used to inhale it as a recreational thing. And what he did was, um, being you know not really having access to the delivery mechanism that a clinical uh, person like ourselves would, he decided just to um, suck it straight out of the out of the, the cylinder. And, and the way he was doing this was he was lying down on the floor. And he was, he was lying the cylinder next down to him, you know, in the storeroom. And he was, he was lying down next to the cylinder and he was just cranking it open a tiny, tiny amount. And um, so it leaked out and um, he was breathing, breathing as it came out of the cylinder. And of course, because he was lying down, um, there was no, you know, chance of him sort of falling over and cracking his head. Which he thought was a sort of quite a clever thing to do, but... Um, the unfortunate thing was that one day he literally went unconscious from inhaling too much of this and the uh, the nitrous oxide continued to um, discharge itself into the area of his mouth and because it's a compressed gas as it decompresses it comes out extremely cold and what had happened was over the course of I don't know minutes hours nobody really knew is this thing this thing had um, given him frostbite of the lip I mean and not just a bit of frostbite, I mean really, really severe, localised, uh, necrotic frostbite of his face. It had literally just frozen his face. And um, when, he, when he'd eventually woken up, or someone had discovered him or something, uh, uh, it was quite clear he was going to lose a major portion of his face, just from the fact that it had been frozen, ir irrevocably damaged through being frozen. Very sad case. And, uh, I mean, in, in that case, I suppose you could say, well, you know, there's some measure of blame or, or you know, contributory negligence to be uh, attached to that. Another very sad oral surgery case. This is the last one, I promise. I'm not too much of a downer on my first podcast of the year. It's a lovely day, by the way. It's really nice. We've had, a, you know, quite a bit of rain, but today's a sunny day. My Vespa is back on the road. I now have, I had to order a new motorcycle helmet because apparently my head had grown. No, it hadn't grown. What had happened was I had to, you know, if you ride a motorcycle, you know, you have two helmets, don't you? You have one for yourself and one for the bit of hot stuff that's on the back, or your wife. And uh, they have smaller heads, don't they, women? So you have like a large and a medium, or a medium and a small. And uh, there's a joke there somewhere. I'm not going to even try and get get it, get it, winkle it out. I'm not, honestly. So um, yeah, so my one because I used it a lot, and then I left it in the garage, and it was all a bit horrible. And the, you know, the pads 20 years ago, they, it was all styrofoam and uh, foam bed, you know, recycled mattress, and uh, so it had all gone horrible. So I uh, threw my one away, but then I completely forgot. I had thrown my one away and then I when I got tried to get my Vespa going I got my I grabbed the nearest crash helmet and tried to cram it on my head only to find out that uh, my head had apparently grown so uh, um, anyway so long story short I've had to buy myself a new crash helmet so which is in here is extremely tight so oh god that's jumped again I'm gonna have to get a decent game if this, the synchronization on this is not right I do apologize I don't know, it's something, I think there must be some sort of uh, Department of Defence Research Establishment somewhere over. This is Manston Airport I'm coming up to and then 
there's some very funny things going on around Manston Airport. There's a, uh, there's a, uh, anyway, so look. <laughs> I don't want to disappear. If I disappear, I want you to notify someone. Don't notify the government, don't notify the police. Notify someone else. Julian Assange. I want Julian Assange notified if I disappear. Especially if I disappear around Manston after what I've just said. But no, there's this, so I've got this new crash helmet, so I'm driving around like this. You know, where are we going next? I don't know. I might take it into work, but Vespas are, if you don't buy a Vespa. I mean, I, I like risk. You know me, I've got a motorcycle license, I've got an airplane license, I drive like a lunatic, I've got a very, very high appetite for risk. I always live like if I'm going to die tomorrow, I shall say farewell, been a good run, I've had a lot of laughs, you know, I do honestly think I've gone past the point at which I can't complain, I cannot complain now, I will complain, you know I've said this before, I will complain, I shall be royally pissed off, but you know, no one's going to say, oh, what a shame, old, old angry, he died too young, he, he died apart from my dependents, he will say, they will say, you know, he had a good run. You know, he was in his 50s, 40s, 50s. You know, he, he um, you know, he, he brought up a family, he's got grandchildren and everything, so he, perhaps he died a bit early, but good riddance. A lot of people just say good riddance. They're angry, angry's gone. <laughs> ah, a lot of people actually are just surviving day to day to try and outlive me, do you know that? they're not going to. I intend on staying around for a lot longer yet. Unless I die in a flaming fireball from trying to record video podcasts and drive at the same time. Which is about the riskiest thing I do. But you don't know, do you? Don't know. Which brings me to my other case I remember as an oral surgeon. When I was at a lecture. Actually, I wasn't an oral surgeon. I mean, my, the other case I remember from all of the oral surgery discipline. Have to be very careful about this. GDC, I am not an oral surgeon. I am just a dental surgeon that performs oral surgery, but in no way a specialist. Although I am very good at my job, but in no way wish to imply that I possess any special expertise or skill above that of the average dentist. <clears throat> anyway, I'm glad we cleared that up. So uh, yeah, so there's this bloke just driving down the motorway must have been the M1 I suppose in those days because that's about the only the only motorway that was around and all of a sudden all of a sudden out of the blue at the speed of a bullet comes this six inch lock part of a lock you know the, the bolts you know it was a bolt that was it it was a bolt like off a bolt action rifle it was a bolt and in the olden days, in the 70s and the 60s, they still had lorries that had drop-down backs. And the ways that the, these drop-down back lorries were secured was they used to put the, put the back up and then they used to put a, a bolt, two, there were two bolts at the side and the bolts went outwards into the frame. And then the bolts then sort of dropped down and um, and that was supposed to sort of secure the, the flap. Well, the, the uh, slides that these bolts <clears throat> travelled in used to get damaged, of course. And uh, sometimes it was possible for these to wiggle these bolts out. You know, you, they weren't captive in the slide. And what had happened was the, uh, this guy had just been driving down the motorway and the other way, coming up the other way up the motorway, was one of these lorries and this bolt that jiggled and jiggled and jiggled around in the back of the lorry and eventually had fallen out. And you can imagine what would happen to a, to a bolt that drops out of the back of a lorry that's, let's say, doing 50, 50 miles an hour. It's gonna drop on the floor and if it, if it goes and it, if it lands on its end, it's gonna ping up, isn't it? And go flying off. And this thing did go flying off and it went flying off across, flew over the barrier and hit 
the car coming the other way at 70 miles an hour. So this bolt, relative to the the guy's face that it ended up in, where it was the eventual resting place, was going at about 120 miles an hour, or or thereabouts, and probably somewhere between 100 and 120 miles an hour, because it went through the windscreen <clears throat> like it didn't exist. And again, in those days, I mean, the windscreens are not, they're, they're, um, they're shatterproof. They're much more shatterproof now than they used to be. And it had just gone through the windscreen, as you would expect, a bolt fired, <laughs> weighing about four ounces, fired at somewhere between 100 and 120 miles an hour, would have done. And as luck would have it, was zeroed in entirely on this guy's mandible. And that's where it ended up stuck, sideways. So, you know, having swallowed his teeth, he then pulled into the side and ended up in the oral surgery department. But it just goes to show. Random, randomness, randomness. That's what the uh, computer gamers know about. They call it RNG. Uh, RNG is uh, short for random number generator. And a lot of games are uh, determined by whether the lady luck is is kind to you you know whether if you're gonna like pick a number <clears throat> any number but the higher the better you know if you're driving a tank and you fire a shell at someone the random number generator RNG will determine whether or not on this occasion at this distance at this angle <laughs> using that particular shell fired by your particular tank at that particular tank whether that's going to pierce the armor or not and how much damage it's going to do it's I mean all those factors are factored in but basically there is an element of luck and the luck is called RNG and uh, people curse RNG or they thank RNG and it's just uh, you don't know you can drive safely you can drive a nice car you can drive on safe roads but if the gods of RNG are not in your favor then you get a bold face. So I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything at work today. I've got a day off, but that's because the engineers are in servicing the chairs. So I bought the practice over a year ago, or well, over a year, nearly two years ago now. And of course, and I know, you know people who have sort of listened to the video know that the place is in a right state and everything was stuck together with Impragum and um, composite resin so what I've done is I've spent the last two years upgrading everything we've got a new sterilizer we've got <laughs> we've got new stuff uh, we got um, at the moment I'm upgrading the uh, light curing units that's one thing I'm gonna order today and oh I don't know loads of stuff you know just uh, better quality paper towels blah 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 and it's paying off, you know, the surgery's busy and uh, we're making a profit, we're fine. So I've decided uh, I can afford a visit from the dental engineers. So Clark have come as the only, having a monopoly on the servicing of the particular chairs that are the ones I bought. And they're always, and I had the um, autoclave, not the autoclave, I had the um, compressors and the suction machine serviced the day, yesterday, day before yesterday, I think. And the bloke says, oh, I've had so much trouble getting the parts for this. These these things are 15 years old. And I'm like, yeah, well, what did, what? Of course you need parts. If something's 15 years old, it's going to have worn out, isn't it? How can these people, they, they, they manufacture this stuff, they make a few spare parts, and then they don't, then just when you need the spare parts, when everything's 15 years old and wearing out, they're like, oh no, we don't do the spare parts. I mean, what is, what are they thinking? When do they think that you're gonna need the spare parts? When do they think that you're gonna need the spare parts when the thing is brand new? No, that's when nobody needs the spare parts. So, I'm not going to mention any names. <coughs> Duh. But please, you know, just just realise that it's 
just when the after 10 years after you've stopped making something that's when you need to start making the spare parts not expect people to fork out for a blooming suction machine more than once in their lifetime what do you think i made a money all right okay <laughs> oh save a bit of fuel i'll talk to you tomorrow all right bye